If an athlete were a cake, intrinsic motivation would be the sugar. It's an essential ingredient. You need sugar to make a cake. It's what makes the cake sweet. Take out the sugar and all you've got is bread. Take out the intrinsic motivation from the athlete and all you have left is, I don't really know, but it's not good. I know that. Today we'll be taking a look at notes from this study in the Journal of Sports Sciences titled The Coach-Athlete Relationship, A Motivational Model. You can check it out for yourself in the show notes below. There are two types of motivation intrinsic and extrinsic or basically we can be motivated to do things because of reasons inside of us or outside of us internal versus external intrinsic motivation the things that are inside of us are things that we do simply because we enjoy doing them i like cake so i eat cake <laughs> I like riding bikes, so I ride bikes. It's simple and yet beautiful. The article we're looking at today defines it as doing an activity for the pleasure and satisfaction derived from engaging in the activity. Intrinsic motivation is really important. And the authors of this article go on to write that intrinsically motivated athletes invest more effort, report higher levels of concentration, are more persistent, and perform better. That makes sense. If you like what you do, you'll do what you like. That's good. We should put that on a t-shirt. Whoa. Would you look at that? Do what you like. Like what you do. In his book, Run, Matt Fitzgerald has an entire chapter dedicated to this topic. Chapter two is titled, Run Happy. And it's all about the connection between high-performing athletes and how they enjoy their sport, why they still have fun doing what they're doing professionally. And in that chapter, he writes, the scientific research on exercise enjoyment teaches us what we already know from real world experience, which is that enjoyment and performance go hand in hand. Check this out. One study conducted by researchers took normal average adults and threw them into a workout program. But they also had those adults rate how much they enjoyed their first initial workout. And they discovered that six months later and even a year later, the adults that rated that first workout as more enjoyable were more likely to stick with a training program. What does that tell us? It tells us that enjoyment matters. Another Matt Fitzgerald quote coming right at you. In his book, How Bad Do You Want It? He defines passion as a strong inclination toward a self-defining activity that people like or even love find important and in which they invest time and energy on a regular basis. And then he goes on to say that if your passion endures, so will you. So what we're getting at is that if you enjoy what you're doing, you're going to do it more, you're going to do it harder, you're going to do it longer, you're going to do it more often. That's volume, that's intensity, that's consistency. I don't know about you, but that's the training trifecta. Every good and effective training plan takes into account volume, intensity, and consistency. And enjoyment leads to all three of those things. So you know you need more intrinsic motivation, so how do you get it? And maybe intrinsic motivation isn't something that you can just get more of. I mean, it's intrinsic motivation. You've either got it or you don't got it. I mean, how do you get more of something if you don't got it to begin with? I don't know. But I think there are ways that we can foster and nurture or maybe just not lose our intrinsic motivation. So, how do we do it? How do we gain intrinsic motivation? Well, the answer is quite simple. Just have fun. But simple doesn't always mean easy. I think we first have to all take a big step back and ask ourselves the very easy, simple question of do I like riding my bike? And after we all say yes, we ask ourselves a follow-up question of why do I like riding my bike? And this is where we start to get more answers and the paths start to diverge. 
If maybe you like riding your bikes because you like hanging out with people, there's a social aspect to it, that's a good answer. Maybe you like pushing your body to the limits, that's, that's a good answer too, that's a, that's a really good answer, I like that, that's probably my answer. Maybe you like the data and the numbers and the science and the structure. Hey, all of these are good answers as to why you enjoy riding your bike. It doesn't matter why you enjoy riding your bike. What matters is that you make that the focus. Whatever your answer is, that should be your focus. Jim Aframo, in his book, The Champion's Mind, writes, keep the pleasure and passion in the pursuit. For me, the reason I like riding my bike so much is because I like racing my bike. I mean, racing, in my opinion, takes all of it and combines it together. You've got the social aspect of hanging out with other bike riders. You've got the pushing your body to its limits factored in there. You've got all the data and the heart rate stuff factored in there. You can set goals and work towards accomplishing those goals. I mean, racing takes all of that and, and, and mashes it all together. And that's why I like racing so much. But what do I do when I'm not at a race? How do I stay motivated on the day-to-day -day bike riding that I have to do when I'm, when I'm not at a race? And the answer is really easy. Stay focused on racing. Oh. Kill anybody. If you want to stay intrinsically motivated, you need to constantly remind yourself of why you're doing what you're doing. For me, it's always reminding myself that I'm doing today's workout and today's plan because of racing. And if you stay focused on that, that will help you to keep that motivation going and going and going. I think a big overarching part of this entire conversation needs to be goals. What is your goal with bike riding? For me, it's all race oriented. And so if you want to check out more videos on goals, I have quite a surplus of those. You can go back and check those out. I'll leave a couple of links in the description for you. Another really important thing that you can do is implementing some fun rides into your training regimen. This could be the group ride. If you enjoy group riding and, and the social aspect of riding is why you ride, then you need to have those fun group ride days incorporated into your training plan. If, if having fun doing skills or on the trails is, is an important fun thing for you to do, you should have fun skills days and fun trail days. And all of this should be communicated to your coach so that they can also incorporate some of these rides into your overall training plan. Another thing that you can do that, that in my opinion is quite nerdy but also kind of cool is you could track your enjoyment. Like you could literally rate every ride on a scale of one through whatever of how much you enjoyed it. One, I hated it. Three, I loved it. Two, eh, it was normal. And this would be, you could come up with a spreadsheet. Um, I've thought about creating a phone app. I don't know how to write a code, but if you do, please contact me and I'll pay you um, a minimal salary for you to write this app that I think would be awesome. Anyways, besides the point. Um, you could track your enjoyment along the way. I think Training Peaks has tried to do this through the little smiley face thing after you work out, but I think it could be built upon. I think that could be improved. And if all else fails, then just quit. I mean, why do something if you don't even have fun doing it? You should do stuff that you like doing it, so if riding your bike isn't that much fun, then go do something you, you enjoy ride, like doing, like, like running or playing chess or, I don't know. I like riding my bike, I'm gonna keep riding my bike. As we get close to the end of this video, let me leave you with this cute little Portuguese saying. Those who run for pleasure never get tired. So sweet, so cute, I love it. Good training, good eating, good sleep, all of these things are so important for an effective training plan. But are you having fun? This might be the most important factor in a successful training plan. I think it's time for a ride. There's a big ride coming up and you wanna bike it, but first you should consider if you even like it. If you're not having fun, maybe you should just be done. You should find what makes you smile and then you'll go the extra mile. That was good. So this video is basically over, but let me leave you with this. You need a coach and you need a good coach. You need a good coach that makes sure that you're having fun so that you're intrinsically motivated and don't quit riding your bike. And I know just the guys. Ignition Coach Co. 
me and Dylan Johnson started a coaching company called Ignition Coach Co., where we are taking racers and developing them into coaches because both Dylan and I are both racers who are coaches and we believe those two things go hand in hand. We believe that being racers makes us better coaches and being coaches makes us better racers and that is why all of our coaches are elite level, high level, high performing athletes themselves. That makes them relatable, that makes them at the events, that makes them know exactly what you're going through because they're going through that same process themselves. So if you're looking for a coach, look no further. Ignition Coach Co. has got you hooked up. Ignition Coach Co. Developing coaches, connecting athletes. Boom.